Looking at everybody, tell me what page that is. How do you get it? You see what? Someone's torn, torn yours out, torn yours out. Her table of contents has been torn out. See, what that means is some child has never been taught the value of a book, got a hold of a book, and tore the page out. You know how y'all are. Doc, that could have been an adult. I've got it. Maybe an adult yeah. tore it out. <laughs> right. Right. You can open that book and look at the table of contents and see and say, how do you use the dictionary? You have anything in it tell me how to use the dictionary? Yeah. What's this right here? Explanatory notes. This, oh, explain it. You know what she found in her book? Instead of saying how to use a dictionary, it says explanatory notes. Because when it says explanatory, this is saying how to use this dictionary. You follow me? So now what page is the explanatory notes on? 7A. Now go there and look at that. In your book, what does it say, Angel? Chris, Chris, um, Mr. Jones has your book. I think you're reading it out. That says, give it to him. Here's your book. And you brought that book for Mr. Starks. Yeah. That's who you give. He's giving you the book. Right. Brother Chris. But you know him, right? This is the one that was introduced to the president. Hey, brother. Nice the young man. All right? So he, he, in the course of getting, he got the books made for his class. In the course of getting the books, he had your book made up, all right? All right. All right, now where are we? Oh, in the front of your dictionary. Find how to use the dictionary. In her book it says explanatory notes. You got how to use the dictionary in your dictionary? Kai, you got one? Show me your dictionary. Open up your, show me the front of your dictionary. Where's your table of contents? In your book, does it have a how to use the dictionary? In the front? Here's the abbreviations key. Turn the page. Turn the page. It's a guide to the dictionary, right? That's a, that's a how to use the dictionary. You found it? Did you find hers? All right, listen, everyone. I, get, I really do. I get tired of saying this over and over and over. You really don't have to ask me how to use the dictionary, because guess what is in your dictionary? How to use the dictionary. So all you have to do is read that. And it will tell you how to use the dictionary. But now guess what they never asked us to do in school? Read that page. And we never read that page. So tell me, if we've never read that page, tell me why anybody thinks they know how to use the dictionary. Who taught them how to do it? Nobody. You were trusting definitions. That is not how you use the dictionary. All right, so you got to go through that, and it's going to teach you what you need to know if you do the work. Then you know how to do this, right? That is weird. Most of us never even, we don't know what the pronunciation bracket is and how to use it. We don't know what the etymology brackets are in the dictionary and how to use that bracket in order to create you a time machine. Once you have a mental time machine, now you can examine history for yourself. You don't need no one to tell you, well, see, yeah. Wait a minute, how, how many times have we been telling tell you somebody? We from Africa. People try to tell you the nonsense about we from Africa. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. I don't know what nobody's talking about. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. I know where I'm from. You catching my drift? We from Africa. How do they know? See, now, in order to understand this, someone wants to say, well, once upon a time, we was brought from Africa. Well, me personally, I think y'all was made in Kentucky. Personally. Natchez. Natchez, Mississippi. Angola, Louisiana. You know where they were breeding niggas. You know what I'm saying? Oh, people don't like to hear that, huh? They like to hear some old nonsense. We came from Africa. Okay, no problem. Where? Where? Oh. No, no. What did they tell me they came from? Ghana. 
Okay, no problem. Tell me two languages from that part of the continent. Now we're back up. Wait a minute. Can't tell me two languages. Well, just say hello in any language off of the continent. Jumbo. Jumbo. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's is weird. That's Swahili. Well, which Swahili is that? You said Key Swahili. I don't think so. Now, let me name some Swahili. Huh? I understand. I like that. I like that. Yes, sir. But let me explain some Swahili's. There is Ki Swahili. There's also Swa Swahili. And then there's Wa Swahili. Now we have to know the difference between Ki Swahili, Swa Swahili, and Wa Swahili. Then we have to understand how did Swahili come into existence? What is the origins of Swahili? Are you following me? Now if we're going to teach ourselves to speak Swahili. Oh yeah, you did say Jambo, right? And at least what I'm going to say to you, who Jambo? You follow me? I'm going to say, who Jambo? Now, I know what Jambo is. What is who Jambo? Ah, you know, because what they do is they come to the restaurant and they tell us all, Jambo, and don't nobody you know one way or another what anybody's talking about. All right, here's what we're going to do. Remember, if you say Jambo, it's like saying, you know, what's up, what's going on? But if you say who Jambo, it's formal. Now what you're talking about, out there in English, how would we say what time it is? Would we say good evening? Well, earlier today we could have said good afternoon. And this morning we could have said good morning, right? But when we say who Jambo, if it is evening, you just say good evening. If it is afternoon, you just said good afternoon. If it is morning, you just said good morning. You see, the language is set up in such a way to ask who Jambo. Now, if you're not smart enough to know that it's evening, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> see, the language is set up in such a way where you don't have to do nothing really required for the stupid. You understand, like Snuff is set up something that's kind of required for imbeciles. You are not imbeciles. You got enough sense to know what time it is. It's whatever time you're standing there. Who's Jumbo? So if it's evening, I've just said good evening. If it's afternoon, I've just said good afternoon. And if I just say Jumbo, I'm just, what's up? You know what I'm saying? What's that? Now in Japanese, if we were to say, how would you say hello in Japanese? Come on. I would say, hello. I like that. What do you say for hello? Konnichiwa. But hold on. That's formal. Now we're going to be informal. Ohio. You know, like Cleveland and what? Cleveland is where? Where's Cleveland? Cleveland, Ohio. What? Oh, you just said what's going on? Wow. In Japanese. But if you were going to use the formal, you would say what? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Now, didn't you learn to count from 1 to 10 in Japanese yesterday? Yes, I did. Do you still remember what you learned? Now, understand, I taught them nothing. I, I wasn't even involved. I walked out, didn't I? You walked out. Now, you and you, you've taught yourself from 1 to 10 in Japanese, right? I need you to get up. Come on. Come on, man. Get up. Come on. Now, everybody, you're going to follow her. And she's going to lead you through what it is that she taught herself. You see, I'm not taking credit for none of that. What they're doing down there at the class at the University of Tennessee, they're doing it. I'm not doing it. I refuse to teach them anything. If they are so dumb that they can't learn how to teach themselves, they ain't worth my time. But this one is smart enough that she can figure out how to teach herself. So yesterday, I walked out the room and I said, by the time I come back, I need all of you counting to 10 in Japanese. Did you accomplish that? Yes, sir. Show them how you, uh, you still remember? You know how to do everything? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I have it. Okay. 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 You got it. Handle it. Well, 
Well, number one is itchy, and the second one is knee. And I teach at Solomon taught us to say itchy knee. So you just said one, two. Sun, like the sun in the sky. So sun, and she's pointing at the sun, so you can say the word sun close enough to get to sun, yeah. which is itchy knee, sun. So that's one, two, three in Japanese, right? Now guess what? If you do what I ask you to do, the next year when I ask you that, you should at least know how to count itchy me sign. Right? So we can get that done, right? So if we just get that little bit done, I bet you we can do some more. How about the fight y'all make yesterday? Now I am not teaching them language. I'm not teaching them nothing. Except how to teach themselves. So take them to ten. Let's go. Oh, um, it's not a number. Four is she, like a girl. She. Oh, so you're pointing at a girl. She's Right now, she's still a young girl. She's about to be a young lady. And soon, she'll be a woman. But we'll just say she right now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Go ahead. She, go as if she's leaving. It's itchy, me, son, she go. Roku, like the royal canoe. Then it's shichi, like chicken. Right. I like that. I like that. Hot chicken, like hot chicken. And then it's kayu, like call you, and then ju, as the juice. That's number 10, ju. Right? Now, if she can teach yourself that in a matter of minutes, I don't understand what's going on with the school system. They're having all these problems with the school system teaching themselves. You know what I think they ought to do? I think the teachers ought to all fire themselves and let the kids teach themselves. They might get something done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. And we're going to come back and we're going to show them over again and again and again, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, anything I'm going to listen to anything? Do I need to do anything? Are we keeping up? Yeah. I'm all right? Yes. I'm not keeping up? Yes, all right, so now, remember, always go to your guide word, then go to your pronunciation bracket. She has a how to use a dictionary. All of you should have a uh, explanatory notes or guide in the dictionary. Please read that, okay? Please read that. Now, for all of you that have a Webster's dictionary, tell me what is was this from? What was this first name? Good, good. All right. What was his first name, dear? What was his first name? Webster. What was his first name? What was what? Noah. How was? Noah. Good. What what year was he born? What year was he born? Then look it up. Look it up. Find the year he was born. Now I know somebody here is saying, I don't care when he was born. What I care about this white man being born and what year he was born. What I care. Well, what language do you speak? English. What language do you speak? English. Oh, really? So, English. American. Oh, we speak American. American <laughs> English? No, we speak American. Oh, well, well then that needs to be less than American English then. That might be. Uh, Anything. Oh, Anything. Uh, neighborhood ease yeah. or something. Yeah. The back ease or something. Not the clean English. I got you. Now, how about this? Find out when he was born. This is the father of American English. If you are learning to speak American English, then know something about it. If he was born what year? 1758. He was born what year? 1758. And he expired what year? 1843. How long did he live then? Mmm is not the answer. How long did he live then? Mmm is not the answer. How long did he live then? You mean to tell me that we cannot subtract in minutes without a pencil and paper? We can't add without a pencil and paper? We can't do that. Mr. Jones, where are you, Mr. Jones? All right, what is five times 800 and 823? Everybody get that? Did everybody get that? Yeah. Is he right? 40, 15? 
Is that is that what he said? Is that right? Is it right? Is not right? Four thousand fifteen. Hold on. What's the equation? Four thousand one hundred fifteen. Is it four thousand one hundred fifteen? Is that right? Are you at a computer? No, you don't have a computer. Was he right? No, I didn't. All right, let's do it again. Hold on. Let's do it again. Let's try it again. What is it? Four thousand. You have a computer? No. No. Okay. Good. All right. No problem. All right. How about this? Let's try it again, Mr. Jones. Five times eight thousand two hundred and sixty. Let's go. I know. I know you're not using pencils and paper to do that, are you? I know you don't have to use a pencil. Why do we reach for a pencil and paper automatically? We program it. We would talk. Isn't that something? So we were not taught to think or how to think about it. We just reach automatically. Wow, this is some strange stuff. What's the equation? No, he's at 8,000 now. Five times is 8,000? Five times eight thousand what? Is it two hundred and sixty? I'm asking you, two hundred and sixty? Alright. And you said the answer was what? The answer was forty one thousand. Three hundred. Three hundred, he says. Is that right? Correct. You question what? The, 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 uh, what was it? What was the rich, what did you ask how much I mean for the Tell him the equation. Tell me the equation again. It was five times eight thousand two hundred and sixty. Forty one thousand per hundred. Oh, so he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he doesn't reach for he doesn't reach for any pencils and any paper. No calculator, nothing. So now guess what? If he can do this, then all of our children can do this. Isn't that right? I'm asking you, isn't that right? 55 times 55. Did you get that? 65 times 65. That would be 4,225. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. Ah, good, good. Now we're getting there. You've been doing the work, right? You've been doing the homework. Good. Now what's the problem about us just trying to follow the structures? All right, wait a minute now. If I asked you what is 25 times 25, right? Do we have to set the problem up like this? 25 times can't see. All right, write it down on your papers then. Let me see how y'all write it down. Write it down on your papers. She wrote it down. 25 times 25. She's been coming around me about a year now. She's still not listening to me. How did I tell you to write that? Now, that means you know how to write that, right? So that's the way you write that. You write it horizontally. You never write it vertically. But they taught us in school to write it which way? Vertically? You would get programmed. What would you get the program to do? You would get programmed. Soon as the problem goes up, to look to your right and think to your right. Five times five is what? I bring down my five, I carry my two. You like carrying things. That's why they want you here. Bad You carry something. I like that. But look, if we stop doing that, you stop causing the brain to go directly to the right. And let the brain do what it does naturally, go to the left. With numbers, the brain is going to always start at the left. If the brain starts at the left, and we do with this, when we're saying 25 times 25, we're squaring the number, aren't we? We're squaring the number. We're multiplying the number times itself. But how about this? We have a prefix and a suffix. The first number will be our prefix, the second number will be our suffix. Why would you have to multiply five times five? Why would you have to do that? 
If he says, because I don't know what 5 times 5 is, then we should make a clock and start at the 1 and put a 1 up over the 5. What would we put over the 2? What would we put over the 3? What would we put over the 4? So guess what just happened? 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Isn't that right? So it's not hard to figure that out what 5 times 5 is, right? So we never should have to think about what 5 times 5 is. So if the number is ending in 5, we know what the end is going to be, don't we? The end, as far as the answer, is going to always be 25. So at this time, we're going to use a little trigonometry. Only trigonometry is mathematics, so that's terms and variables. But instead of using terms and variables, now we're going to use numbers. This is going to put the trick in. See, it's all just a trick in the first place. The test is a trick. But if you don't know how you get the trick, you're going to fail the test. But if you can trick the test, you're going to win. Isn't that right? So if you understand the trick, 45 times 45, let's go back there. 4 times 4 is what? In trigonometry, we've got to deal with a 1. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is? I'm not, I don't mean plus 1, let's say plus 4. 1 times. 20. 20. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20. So our answer is? 20, 25. 1,025. That's all. 35 times, I mean, no, no. I asked him 55 times 55, didn't I? Yeah. The end of the answer is what? The end of the answer is what? 25. So the first part, the prefix is going to be 5 times 5 plus 5 is what? So the answer is? Computer can't do that. Can you write it on the blackboard? When I get some water. But you can write it on your paper. All you think is you think horizontally. Now, the pattern. When you think about the pattern, I, I really hate to start with 15 times 15, so let's just start with 25 times 25, right? We don't have to think about the 5 times 5. <coughs> we already know what the answer is on that, right? We know that's 25, right? So it's 2 times 2. Plus 2. So the answer is what? That's the answer. Now go through the whole pattern. Now go to 35 times 35. Do the same thing. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 25 is the answer. I say that this baby right here can do this. If someone explains it. I say that if someone had explained it to you when you were in school, you would have been doing it all of your life. But what they did is they said, well, see what you got to do is you got to use a pencil to think. You can't think without a pencil and a paper. But wait a minute, the brain is in here, right, inside the skull. Where's the mind? Where's the mind? Where's the mind? Where's the mind? Ah! See, y'all trying to help him. Wait, he just got here. Why do you think it's in the brain? Why do you think that? Have you ever looked at the brain? I know you were trying to be a brain surgeon when you were growing up. But if you go to school and look up a brain, tell you what I need you to do. You have a dictionary with you. When somebody hands him a dictionary. You know how to look? That won't work. It's a pocket dictionary. I need a dictionary. Let me see mine. Pocket dictionary. Let me look at yours. Here's what I need you to do. Look up the brain. Now, when you look up the brain, you should see a picture of a brain. And when you look through that picture, it will mark areas that are in the skull that are in the brain. They have numbers. And it will tell you by the number every part of the brain. Now guess what you will not find in there? Mind. Nothing is going to be marked. Mind. You're going to find memory in there. You're going to find occipital. You're going to find all kinds of stuff in there. I need you to learn everything about every part of the brain. See, if you know about the child's brain, they can't send you nothing home from school telling you about your child needs to be on pills. <laughs> See, because when they do that, they say your child's brain is going to work too, too sweat. So you go find out something about the brain for yourself. You know if your child needs to be on pills. Now, I don't think your child needs to be on pills, personally. I think they just need to know how to think. 
they are figuring this out. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense to you? Hey, help me in. All right? Oh, he's got one. He's got a picture. Hold that picture. He's got a picture of the brain. In your picture of the brain, there's the same thing about the mind there. It's not there, is it? And you've been thinking that all of your life, haven't you? Why have you been thinking that? Because somebody in school taught you that. Because somebody in school taught you that. And guess what they're teaching your babies at school? That the mind is in the brain. And as long as your children are thinking that, somebody controls the way they think. <laughs> but see, what I'm trying to do is get your kids to understand. Mr. Jones, hold on one second. What, are you, what am I telling you when I'm telling you, Kim's? I want him to keep his mouth shut. See, I don't need them in school to know that he knows all about Tesla. Because the minute they know that he knows all about Tesla, then they're going to try to send him up to Virginia somewhere to some, some private school that they pay for. And next thing you know, he disappears. That's what's happening to your babies, whether you know it or not. I do want them to ace everything, and I do want them to go to the best schools, and I do want them to go without spending one dime. They should pay you to go to school. But we gotta be real smart to do this. So once you learn all this, you don't go in there hollering and shouting, telling everybody that you know how to figure the, uh, the answers out. Can we get some chalk? Hey, we got some chalk. It still won't mind. Ah. There you go, five times, right? Listen, they told us to do this. Did they tell us to do this? First thing you do, your brain goes to the right. And you're saying five times five, 25, bring down my five, I kill my two, right? I'm asking her to go horizontal. Have y'all ever noticed that when your children get to about the seventh grade, and all of a sudden, matter of fact, it just happened to some of y'all, Brandon, when you were in school, when you got to about the seventh grade, all of a sudden, and they started to teach you something like algebra or something, and all of a sudden, everything started going. Are we on the right side? Yeah. It must be the chalk. Somebody did something to the board. Yeah, let's try it. You know, we got to seventh grade, and all of a sudden the numbers start going horizontal, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we started having problems mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it got hard. We couldn't do this. For the first two or three years, they've been teaching you to go vertical. Then all of a sudden, you get to school one morning, and they start doing mathematics. And then everything will go horizontal, and all of a sudden, you start failing. There's something wrong with that one. But how about if you had done this? How about if someone had just told you when you were a little child, I want you to count this way. Count from the left. Five times seven is what? And see, see them right there, babies right there? See, I need them looking at a round clock. They're going 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that when they get to that 7, they know that 5 times 7 is what? But if that 7 is right here, they know that's 350. And so when they look at this, they immediately know that it's 375. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to carry nothing nowhere. You see, 5 times 7 is what? Yeah, but see, this is an intense place, so there's a zero there. So that means that if this is an intense place, that's 350. Why are you thinking about zeros in the first place? I don't know what. You let your kids talk to zeros. You, know? you let them walk home with zeros. You let them do everything. You don't follow what they're doing. You know, they have a conversation with zero. And I bet you what, they have conversations with zeros. They're going to grow up and they're going to marry what? Zero. And they'll have babies with what? Zero. And the babies are going to be what? Zero. Now listen, at this point, if we got a few babies, they're all zeros. Now stop doing something to make sure that we make them whole. 